Hi, this is Donna Lewis, and welcome to Transformed TV. We're going to bust three myths surrounding forgiveness. Myth number one, forgiveness is unconditional. Myth number two, that to forgive, you forget. And myth number three, to let go of bitterness, you have to let go of boundaries. Please hang up and try again. Acts 3.19 reads, Repent and return so that your sins may be wiped out and times of refreshing may come. 1 John 1.9 reads, If we confess our sin, he is faithful to forgive our sin. We clearly see from these two passages that to receive the forgiveness Christ prepared for us when he died on the cross, we must first repent and confess that sin. We must acknowledge and agree with God that we have transgressed his righteousness. We have transgressed his highest ideal for us, which is to love our neighbor as ourself and walk humbly with our God. If we do not acknowledge our sin before him, the truth is not in us, according to 1 John 1, 10. In these two scriptures, we clearly see that forgiveness from God is indeed conditional. So the question is, does he place a higher standard on us than he does himself? Luke 17, 3 and 4, I believe answers that question. This is Jesus teaching on how to reconcile relationships between two people. If your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. We clearly see here that no, we do not have a higher standard placed on us than God places on himself. In order to receive forgiveness from another person or from God, we must first acknowledge that we have transgressed the relationship. We must confess that what we did is wrong and ask for forgiveness. Then we receive forgiveness. Forgiveness, my friends, is not an entitlement. It is a gift. It is a gift that we must freely give if someone repents. Because God in Christ freely forgives us when we repent. Myth number one, unconditional forgiveness has been busted. <laughs> Myth number two, to forgive is to forget. Well, first and foremost, we're human beings. It is impossible to forget. The way God made our brains, there is no possibility of forgetting unless we have some sort of serious brain damage. We don't want that, neither does God. So, is he asking us to go get brain damage? No. What he is asking is for us to release our anger. He says in his word, the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God and that anger resides in the bosom of fools. To be angry, but do not sin in our anger. It is impossible to not get angry at injustice. So, 
When we receive an injustice, of course we're going to become angry about it. The key is to not sin in that anger. We sin when we choose to hang on to that anger. David gave us great examples throughout the book of Psalms about how to deal with our anger in a healthy manner. We release that anger to God. We confess that anger to God. We are honest with our anger before God. We let him know just how badly this injustice hurt us, how angry it makes us, and that we want him to do something about it. God in his compassion is willing to accept that anger from us and heal our hearts with his promise that he will do justice, that he will indeed punish the wicked and reward the righteous. In confessing our anger to God, we allow him to take that burden from us. And we trust him with the burden of the unjust acts that we have been a victim to. When we release that anger to him, the bitterness goes with it and the healing begins. It also prepares our heart so that if the person who hurt us does indeed repent, we're ready to forgive them. It, in essence, is mimicking Christ. He took the punishment for our transgressions on himself, making it possible for us to receive forgiveness from God if we repent. We must prepare the soil of our heart by releasing our anger and agreeing that we won't take revenge, that we trust God to exercise justice on our behalf, either by drawing the person to repentance or by executing punishment on Judgment Day. This frees us. This brings freedom and healing to us. No, it is not possible, apart from brain damage, to forget sins done against us. And the more traumatic the injury, the deeper the imprint on our memory. It is, however, very possible to receive healing from God for those injuries by confessing the anger to him, by appealing to our righteous judge to execute justice and to prepare our hearts for reconciliation should the opportunity present itself. Myth number two, to forgive means to forget, has been busted. And finally, myth number three, to let go of bitterness, you have to let go of boundaries. 1 Corinthians 15.33 reads, Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Proverbs 22.24 reads, Make no friendship with a man given to anger. Titus 3.10, As for a man who stirs up division, after warning once and twice, have nothing more to do with him. Clearly, God has a purpose in setting boundaries. We do not let go of our boundaries in order to let go of our bitterness. Jesus teaches in Matthew 5, 44, love your enemies 
and pray for those who persecute you. He does not say be in relationship with those who persecute you. We love them oftentimes by having these boundaries, by allowing a person to reap the fruit of their behavior, we give them motivation to change their behavior. If they never see a penalty for what they're doing, how do they ever recognize that something's wrong in their life? We love them, we pray for them, we don't wish them harm. We let go of our desire to seek revenge. We allow God to take the role of justice in our enemy's life. But that does not mean we reconcile the relationship or let go of all of our boundaries. Myth number three, letting go of bitterness means letting go of boundaries has been busted. And that's it for this week on Transform TV. Hit that subscribe button, share with your friends, and leave me your comments. But most important, always remember you're loved.